Welcome back to another watercolor tutorial, everybody. We're going to be painting this very moody landscape today. Moody forest landscape that reminds me a lot of British Columbia. So we're going to start with our piece of paper in portrait position. And I've taken my mop brush just to apply a wash, a background wash. And I just took a bunch of greens mixed together with a little bit of black. It doesn't really matter what color it is as long as it's faded, like it's very, very uh, translucent and wishy-washy as I like to call it. And uh, like we don't want to use red, but earth tones. So anything grayish, greenish, bluish will do, brown. Even a little bit of yellow would be fine, but you're just covering your whole piece of paper in that wash. And uh, this photo, I found it on Pinterest. I don't know who the author is, um, so I don't know who to give credit to in the uh, in my description box, so if anybody recognizes this and knows who it came from, then by all means comment so I can add it to the description. So once you've applied this nice wash, we want to work while it's still wet. So I'm grabbing my size 14 Grumbacher brush and I'm using just a, a combo of greens mixed with a little bit of black to darken it. And I'm just um, painting these swoops upwards and then they're gonna like go down diagonally like this not diagonally, sorry, um, downwards, that's what I meant to say. And I'm just going to tilt my piece of paper upside down to allow that ink or the color to kind of bleed downwards. Okay. And again, while it's still wet, I'm working with, I want it to be wet. I'm mixing some brown in the bottom here, just across my page. I'm doing the same thing and then another layer of green on top of that. Like that, flipping it again. And letting that watercolor run downwards for a moment. I quite like this look, very faded, very moody. Uh, I'm just thinking here, I'm adding some black now to my green, making a very dark <clears throat> color and just adding that to the bottom now. Doing the exact same thing. Okay. 
and again flipping it upside down letting that droop I'm just I want to make my bottom super dark <clears throat> and that's why I keep adding darker and darker pigments to the bottom there and I have cotton paper I'm using cotton paper so it can handle that all that moisture and because it was wet it faded into this you know beautiful mystic situation here now this part of my piece of paper is already getting pretty dry so I'm trying to work quickly here because now I want to add something on this side as well so I'm taking my green mixed with a little bit of brownish black and yeah it's quite a bit drier here so now I'm just going to paint my uh, more defined pine trees and these aren't really painted in a style that I usually paint pine trees it's a lot more abstract but as a result it looks really neat it looks like uh, more realistic in an abstract way I know that doesn't make very much sense but uh, at least that's the impression I get from it so I'm just mixing a variety of colors and and black and whatever into it until I'm satisfied with the color that I'm using So I'm just doing that on the right side of my page there. And honestly, this was pretty, this is improv because that right side was drying a bit too quick and I had to do something with it before it completely dried. So this is what came out of it. And it actually, you know, doesn't look that bad. So we are rolling with it. Okay, <clears throat> now I'm going to paint something similar on this side. Uh, I'm going to use a little bit of brown mixed with black just for the trunk. And this part's still wet, which is nice. Um, just trying to think here what I'm going to do. You're like, oh, I shouldn't have done that one thing because I ruined it. But we're going to try to salvage this. using that same technique where I'm turning it upside down and kind of letting the water run downwards.
I'm gonna go over this tree that I painted the first time around and give it some new life, I think. Alright, it's not totally destroyed yet, so I'm going to just take a smaller brush here and try to draw a, or not draw, paint a pine tree that is <clears throat> faded out a little bit. It's going to sort of blend in to the background. Not bad, not bad. Shall we try it again? Maybe another one coming from over here. A lot of my tutorials, especially, you know, these, these, uh, moody pine tree ones, I don't really know what I'm going to paint ahead of time, even when I'm using a reference. Um, it ends up looking n not like the reference at all, like I just kind of make it my own. And that's what happened here, because you know, like you see something, you're like, oh, that would actually look really great if I added that. And then most of the time it works, but sometimes it does not. And this was one of those times where unfortunately it did not work in my favor. Um, but we are trying to salvage it. I'm trying to show you that even when you have a painting that doesn't really look that great or isn't working out, that you should persevere and work through it because it might end up looking really nice in the end. And I'm not saying this one is, but a girl can hope. So I think I'm going to let this dry. I think I've said that three times now, but I think I'm gonna let this dry and then we will do another layer and try and fix this mess. I'm kind of hesitant to do anything now because I kind of got it to a point where it's workable, like we can do something with this. Uh, I want to do something with this side, either make this tree more vibrant or put something in front of it using the green. So I'm going to try that. Now oh, the thing is, is I want to create like a, a washed out area now so that this tree kind of fades into the background or begins to. So I'm just adding some water here to create a gradient all the way down to the page so that we prevent the cauliflower effect. 
And now I'm going to try to fade this out naturally. Including at the top. Okay, I'm going to try to salvage this now by painting another tree there. If you can't tell, I'm starting to get pretty frustrated. Okay, hey, so, okay, I kind of fixed it, kind of. I think I'm gonna leave it before I do anything else to that. But that's looking better than it was, so we're okay there. Um, now I'm going to add some trees to the left side. And again, I want to fade, fade some of this out so that it looks misty. So I painted it on very pigmented and I'm just taking a brush that's been watered down and I'm spreading out that pigment. And I'm going to paint another one beside it because I've created that same Thing that I did here where there's uh, like it's gonna create a cauliflower effect if I don't put anything there so I'm just fixing it these painting is a lot of trial and error especially when you're working with watercolors which are um, very flowy to put it one way There we go. We have that mist continuing through the next tree. Like so. And we can paint another one there. And spread that out as well. Continuing that mist through the trees.
Okay. I'm kind of hesitant to do anything more. I like how this turned out, but it, it's missing something in the in the uh, foreground here, I think. Um, so I'm very tempted to add some more color here and then do the slanted thing again. So here I'm loading up my paintbrush with uh, water and pigment and I'm um, letting it slope downwards. Sorry, it's kind of hard to show this when I'm holding it downwards. So I like that a lot more now that it's quite a bit darker down there. Okay, I think I am going to leave this because I think I'm satisfied with how this turned out and I don't want to add anything else in case I ruin it. Um, actually, as I say that, I'm going to add something else. Here, just a tree sticking out because this is doing that cauliflower thing again. So I'm just adding a tree there. Maybe one more here. Okay, I think we are finally finished. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this very convoluted painting tutorial. I hope you could follow along or at least learn something from this process. Um, if you have any suggestions, please um, say whatever you need to in the comments. Let me know if you definitely don't want something like this again. And uh, I will see you guys in the next tutorial.